Hi, this is Ron Martinson of ronmartblog.com, and I'm here to talk to you about image genomic noise wear. So I've created a duplicate layer of the background, and I'm going to go up here to Filter, Image Genomic Noise Wear. And this is a full-size image, so it takes a little bit to load. Um, and I've started off with the default settings, which if I click on it and look at it, it actually does a pretty good job for the default. And to be quite honest, most of the time I do actually use the default as my starting point. Uh, sometimes I'll come in here and choose one of the other effects, like um, for less no noisy images, I do experiment with weaker noise to see what that does. Um, sometimes for landscape, if I want to preserve a little more detail, I'll do that because, you know, pretending her hair is landscape, you know, it's going to leave a little more uh, detail in there than you get with the default settings. You kind of lose a little bit. Uh, so I'll experiment with that. Uh, sometimes night shots a little bit more aggressive with the noise, uh, but again, still preserving detail. Um, so I'll experiment with that as well. So depending on what I'm doing, I'll generally find a preset that works for me. But tonight, for um, sake of argument, I'm going to show you some of the other features of the user interface. So over here on the left side, are the controls that um, you can adjust manually and you know generally uh, you can find out what you um, like by just simply you know, either editing directly or you can create a new tab called add preview to kind of go back and forth between what you had before and what you had now so if I were to come here and turn the luminance way down I'd see okay this is what default does and the default with just the luminance adjusted to minus 20 does this and if I come over here and click on this little tab it'll show me that um, you know for preview uh, preview 2 and then for um, preview 1 the difference is that luminance uh, noise level set to 0 so over here preview 1 shows me preview 2 the luminance noise level set to minus 20 so it kind of shows me what's different for those other previews versus what I have here so that's kind of handy as well if I were to um, come over here and uh, change this one to 26 and see okay noise reduction is different and I'd see that okay now that I'm a preview 2 that noise reduction is set to 26 and so on so that's kind of cool so let's go ahead and just close that um, reset default settings make sure everything's all back to normal again and what we can also do is we can do what's called bracketing now this is a really awesome feature because you know you slide these things around and you kinda of start going blind after a while trying to figure out what is this thing really doing so a better way is to come in here into bracketing and you can choose any of the sliders that exist um, you can choose to do bracketing for those. So let's experiment with just luminance noise levels, or actually luminance noise reduction for starters. And then we can choose a number of previews between 3, 5, and 7. And I usually like to do more. And then whatever bracketing steps you want to do. So I'm going to do 5% for this particular one, and I'm going to say replace open windows, which is okay because it won't ruin what I have. It will just take that as the, as the baseline and then create um, other windows and it just makes it a more meaningful name this time so we had 70 before now it's called luminance 70 and it goes below and above just like if you were to bracket exposures it's bracketing the settings that you've made so the cool thing about this is I can say okay well what does it look like with 88 okay I see it uh, does a much better job with the noise reduction but I lose a little hair detail so I come down here to 52, I get more hair detail at the expense of more noise. And so I can kind of flip through and decide, you know, hey, how much do I really want? And I get each step of the way, I can see exactly the impact of changing that noise uh, luminance slider. And so once I've chosen the one that I want, let's say I decide I want to go with 76 here, I'm going to go a little more aggressive, I can come in here and I can choose to close out the previews if I want, or I can do another set of bracketing and it'll take care of it for me. Either way works fine. So I generally close them, just makes me feel better. And then let's say, okay, now let's come over here to
sharpening, okay? And let's do the same thing again. Again, any value we want. Let's just choose five. Uh, oops, excuse me. A little, little bug there. Um, let's choose bracketing steps from six. And so if I go OK, now I can see sharpening 20, which is really bad. I can see sharpening zero, which is really soft, but I lose uh, some of the detail. And because I went below the range, you actually see that there's three of the same value. So that's one reason to keep your bracketing uh, values a little smaller so you stay within range, but it's okay. You just ignore those and um, these three will all be identical. And so if I come in here to sharpening 5, 10, see as I, as I increase from 5 to 11, I get a lot more detail in the hair, but I also start to get some other artifacts elsewhere. So I can kind of decide, you know, what is it I really want to balance with this was zero again I usually go back and forth and this was 11 and so oops and then I just keep working until I find one I'm satisfied with for this one I'm going to just choose 11 again close other previews and you just sort of rinse and repeat this for your settings I generally find that um, that color noise reduction uh, is less aggressive and um, we can actually see an example of that. Let's just add a preview and say, I turn that all the way down. You see, it didn't really turn on a whole lot more noise. You'll see a little bit of kind of a blackish color here that's being impacted by the color noise reduction. Now it's gone. You can't see that very well. Let's go ahead and do it one more time at 200%, just so it might be a little easier to see. That's zero. You see these spots get bigger. This is 100%, they get a little bit smaller. And that's our complete before and after. So the other thing we can do is we can choose to have before and after previews live while we work so we can kind of see, you know, get the big picture of how much detail and color are we really losing. As I increase this color uh, noise reduction, I do actually start losing some of the actual color from the image, so um, you got to be careful how much you crank that up. So at any rate, I'll, uh, for this particular image, there's not a whole lot of color noise, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time um, on that one. My main thing I'm really interested in is luminance noise reduction, and that's generally the case. And the other thing is how much detail you want to put back. Now. One school of thought says, don't worry about the detail enhancement here. Just accept the defaults and do your noise uh, or your sharpening later. Um, and I generally stick to that advice. Um, for this example, I'm just doing it to show you. So you can kind of see before and after on her face. Uh, we softened her skin kind of indirectly. So if that bothers you, you may want to turn the noise reduction down um, or potentially uh, use something like real grain to add the noise back later. Um, and we lost a lot of detail in our hair. So one strategy could be that we go ahead and go back to Photoshop, mask out this area, um, and bring back all that hair. Or um, we just use less aggressive noise reduction on one pass and maybe come to a second pass of more aggressive noise reduction on just the background. Lots of strategies on how to handle it. It's up to you as to which one you want to do. Um, for me, I think that I'm going to probably scale this luminance noise reduction back down just a little bit because it's, I feel like I've lost a little too much detail in her face. And this is the problem of, you know, when you start getting in there at 200%, it's real easy to get obsessed with all the details and just get too aggressive with your noise reduction. So I generally try to review it um, around 100% to 50% because um, that more accurately represents um, you know, about the level of detail I'm going to want to see uh, when I print the image. And so now that I am done, I'll just click OK. And this particular filter applies it to the current layer. That's why I went ahead and took the time to um, create a layer before doing it, because I didn't want to uh, override my background. And so I can quickly see there's the before and there's the after. We got a lot of, rid of a lot of noise. And again, if you wanted to be more aggressive in some areas, what you could do is uh, mask out some and then do multiple passes. That way you could leave a little bit more detail in her jacket and in her hair 
but then have a lot more aggressive uh, uh, noise reduction for this background area here. So let's just do that for fun. So we'll create another layer here and we will come in, say filter, noise wear, and this time let's just be really kind of strong with it for the background. So we'll say uh, stronger noise. So we got some really aggressive settings for the background here. And what we'll do is we'll Alt create a layer mask and then we can um, come in here and with a really big brush just add the noise reduction to the places where it's kind of bothering us. We just kind of see it up here more than we do down here so I'm not really going to fool with it too much there. I'm just going to kind of hit these areas that are kind of getting my attention and bothering me up here. And again, there's lots of different strategies about how precise you need to be. Um, you know, what we talked about before, we could have potentially brought some of our hair and jacket detail back by bringing the noise back in. Um, see what that would look like. Let's come here and using a black brush, let's block out that. And so you see that there's a little bit more detail there. Adding a little bit of noise back to her jacket actually isn't a bad thing. It's not, this feels more like texture than it does noise, so it's okay that it's there. So again, lots of strategies on how we can do this. Um, I'm actually gonna merge this layer so I can get the results of both those. So let's apply layer mask and now I'm just doing the noise up top and I've got this effect that I did here and so now with um, multiple layers I've got um, all the noise reduction that I wanted. So now since we're using noise wearer products, or excuse me, uh, image sonic products, let's go ahead and create a new layer and I did a control alt shift E to basically merge everything up into a new layer or you can do a um, command Alt Shift E on the Mac. And I'll come in here and say Image Nomic Portraiture. And let's work on that uh, face a little bit. So, this one I'm using Accurate uh, Preview versus the Fast Preview I used on the last one, uh, which is a little bit slower, but for skin reduction or skin softening, I prefer that. I can choose whatever preview that I want. But what I like to do with this is I like to I have um, image genomic portraiture create a mask for me. So if I look over here on the right hand side, you'll see that this is what's going to apply uh, or get the noise, or excuse me, the skin softening effect. So I just want to really apply to her skin. So I'm going to choose this um, pick mask color and I'm going to click on just her skin. And now what this does is that it's created a mask and it's only applying the skin softening to the areas you see highlighted on here. And this uh, area over here in the skin tones mask changed to a plus. So if I want to refine and add more to it now that I just click plus. Unfortunately there's no remove. So if I wanted to add this little shiny white part I could click and add that. And you can see there's a little bit more uh, than there was before. If I get too aggressive and start getting like say into a dark area right here and click on that you're going to see now that I have a mask that includes a lot of the background too, which isn't what I want. So if you get into that state, you can either undo or you can come and just start over. And essentially what you're there's, uh, doing is creating a, a boxed region based off of color um, to apply the um, mask that will be used. Now, once I have my mask, I can come in and choose one of my pre-fault uh, or presets. So like I can choose high to have a really aggressive skin softening. And if I come over here and I choose 50%, um, you can see that I have a lot better skin softening, but um, it might be a too aggressive for some, so I can come down here to say normal, 
and it's a little less aggressive um, skin soft you see a little bit more texture so it's kind of personal choice and then of course there's our old friend bracketing if you want to change any of these um, skin softening parameters to see you know what difference it would make so um, you know feel free to experiment and you know slide your uh, sliders around um, what portrait size does is it's a little bit goes from being um, if I click on this it's a little bit more aggressive at smaller images and a little less aggressive at larger images and so I just usually leave that to auto detect and then if I wanted to do something like potentially you know brighten that area that was masked uh, I can do that and it's focusing primarily on the masked areas it does a little bit on the edges as well um, so if you, you know, decide hey the skin's a little bit looking a little bit dull I want to brighten it up or if I just want to give it you know a little bit more warmth um, and of course it's really easy to go way overboard with that so you got to be careful um, oops I'm sorry just make sure you use the use mask so that you're only applying it to the mask I had forgot that I had unchecked that previously and so um, that's pretty much how I use uh, portraiture. Uh, all the same great features that we saw in Noiseware here, including uh, if you do your little tabs and and make a change, you'll see the the same sort of things you had before, including thumbnails um, that you can make as big or small as you like. And so, really cool user interface. Lots of good stuff you can do. And once you decide you find the one that you want, just get rid of the other tabs click OK and apply your mask now you see now we have a really um, a layer that is just a mask and just applies to this area if I wanted to avoid getting her outfit um, I just come in here and I'd create a mask and using a big black brush let's increase the size of that I'll just come along and erase that and so we could limit our effect just to the skin and now what I do is turn on the other layers again and uh, a lot of times for this one I'll actually just come in and apply my layer mask because I know I'm not going to go back and change it again and it just makes my file size smaller when I do that so that's no skin softening that's with skin softening and sort of a, a common advice I'll tell my students is that generally we tend to overdo the skin softening so after I feel pretty comfortable uh, with my mask and everything I'll generally slide the slider around to see how much I really want and usually I'll settle somewhere around the 70 percent range uh, regardless of what my settings were inside portraiture just because I tend to find myself being a little too aggressive uh, when I'm in portraiture and so this helps kind of scale it back some so now that we're done with that I just want to um, sort of provide a practical tip is how do you get rid of these shiny spots that happen so so what I do is I create a new layer and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use the content aware patch tool to make sure sample all layers is turned on uh, I'm not really and uh, don't want to be so tight in there and so what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll select this patch that's just way too hot and then I'll feather my selection which you can use the shortcut key to do that um, and then making sure that I'm doing content aware sample all layers I'll just come over here choose another patch and that looks horrible right off the bat but the cool thing is is I can come in here and say fade patch selection and I can make it look a lot better I'm bringing the texture back but I'm getting rid of some of the shine and so how much is sort of personal preference personally I'll tend to leave a little bit more texture and if we do that and decide, you know, maybe that uh, still isn't enough, I need to do more. What I like to do for these is create a layer mask and just 
apply the layer mask just so I have that change isolated. And then I'll do another Control Alt Shift E or Command Alt Shift E to create a new layer. And I'll repeat that process that I just did. So if I come in here, and this time I'll use my shortcut key, I'm going to feather my radius. This is just so the edges aren't hard so you don't see what you did. And then I'll just repeat that process. And doing multiple layers is a lot more effective sometimes than doing it all at once. Um, I know it seems a little counterintuitive, but um, when you stack them a little bit at a time, you get uh, just a little bit better results, in my opinion. Now we can see before and after from a distance. And you know you, you can spend a lot of time trying to make this perfect, and then we can kind of just come over here with just the normal spot healing brush. and get rid of some of these other little spots. And how much time we spend on that is all personal preference. The more time you spend being precise, the better the result. But if you're only going to show it uh, at 550 pixels like I typically do on the um, blog then you don't need to spend a ton of time on there. So now much better than before. So we've got a before with our noise and our shiny skin and after. And for kicks and giggles I went ahead and processed her eyes just using a high pass filter and in advance um, just to save time, I'll just drop that on there. And if we wanted to go one step further, our good old friend uh, Tonal Contrast from uh, Nick Software, or I guess Google now, we click on that um, and turn off midtones. Then we get a much more vivid color. creates an overall nicer look and again you know how much texture you have in here depends on you know, your personal preference but I actually like uh, a little extra texture and something like a um, sweater like that and so here's the before and after before after thanks for joining me um, I have a discount for this on my blog and um, for both image um, nomic products, so please come by runmarkblog.com and take advantage of the, these and all my other discounts. Thanks a lot. Bye.